What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Line of the Stars. I'm Jordan, and we are back today with another episode of Star Trek Resurgence. And man, that last episode, I am playing two episodes in a row, and uh, I just had to like stop, have a, a sip of coffee, and I was just like, holy crap. That last episode was just something. That was an absolute blast to play. So, let's go ahead and review the consequences of my actions so to say uh you know to review um the there was a the ion storm basically uh had a surge that uh, approached the station and um every officer kind of offered different viewpoints on how to handle the situation with ultimately captain solano making giving the order to blow the dock the bolts at the dock not really my call to disobey an order, although I do see that there was an option to discuss it further, but no lives were lost. And ultimately, in the end, I feel like it was the right decision to make. So Captain Solana was pleased. Uh, Jera, Jera followed his orders and blew the bolts on the docking clamps in the heat of the moment. Lieutenant Bedrosian ad admired Jera's instincts to protect the crew when the Starbase ordered her to disengage the docking clamps, but she was worried when Jera seemed willing to follow Captain Solana's orders without trying to explain the situation, and she was disappointed when Jera followed Captain Solana's orders and put the crew at on the hull at risk. It's interesting... All of her suggestions were very, you know, you have to follow me, you have to listen to me. It's kind of interesting, like, yes, you do, I guess, worship the ground I walk on, but no, I don't have to listen to you. Uh, Commander Westbrook, the asshole, um, respected Jera's inclination to protect the crew when Starbase uh, ordered her to disengage the docking clamps but was troubled when Jera seemed willing to follow the captain or willing to follow captain Solana's orders without trying to explain the situation. Ultimately, he was dismayed when Jera followed captain Solana's orders and put the crew on the hull at risk. Yeah, I get it. Um, you know, but at the same time, you know, there are many lives on the starbase that, you know, could have been affected by that. So yeah, no, I, I get, I get it, but no, uh, Commander Ermont was glad Jarrah's first instinct was to protect the crew when the Starbase ordered her to disengage the docking clamps, but was concerned when Jarrah seemed willing to follow the captain's orders without trying to explain the situation. He respected the confidence, or Jarrah's confidence in following the or captain's orders, even though he had his own conflicted feelings about putting the crew on the hull at risk. Interesting perspective, like, he was happy with what you know, was done, but you know, it seems like they just, the crew doesn't trust the captain. And to be honest with you, I don't really trust the captain either. So I wonder if we're going to find out more about what happened and like to the ship. And if he pushed the crew too hard, if it was him and you, yeah, I'm curious to see what that story was. Commander Chovak <laughs> approved of Jerry's decision to follow the captain's orders to blow the bolts from the docking clamps. Makes total sense. And Ensign Calloway was grateful for Jerry's sense of humor when he was nervous on the shuttle flight. Okay. <laughs> so let's go ahead and keep going here. The price of duty. <laughs> Millie. I'm good. Help me with him. Oh, man. Let's get this off. Ooh. Medical. Got one wounded at my location. Carter. You don't look so good. What is that burn on his face? You gotta be more careful. I just got here. I'm not ready to see you two get blown to space dust just yet. Now let's get you down to sick bay. Great. Yeah, that was a rough mission for the two of y'all. Status report. The repair crew made it inside. EPS flow is back to nominal levels. The SIP is back up. How does this affect mission readiness, Mr. Ermott? The Resolute suffered damage from the exploding bolts. But we've successfully moored to the station. The ship is secure. 
Our systems are coming back online, but we have a fair amount of repairs before we're ready to go. Put a halt on the roll-off of Starbase Engineering staff. We have a schedule to keep. Excuse you? Send updates to my ready room. Commander Rydek, with me. Um... Dude. <sighs> what a debacle. I was caught with my pants down. Not even on my own ship when the wave hit. I had to go running out of the Starbase Commander's office just to... <sighs> but you followed my order. I appreciate that. <sighs> Hell, I'm relieved. You're the captain. You're the captain of this ship. You give orders, and I'll execute them. That's right. Mm. But you see my problem, don't you? They... They were all against me on that bridge. They weren't. And they were ready to go against my orders. I'm not blind to it. I think you're wrong about that. You still have the respect of the crew, and we have bigger things to deal with. We have a high priority mission ahead of us and a lot to do to get ready. We're going to have a pretty big problem if I can't count on the bridge staff. Bro. There's nothing in the rank and file. And you're going to drink? Oh my god. Oh. Drink? No. No. Thank you. Your predecessor, Commander Sutherland, is missed. But for all the adoration of the crew, including the senior staff, I just couldn't rely on him. He would question, undermine me in front of the crew. Yeah, I won't do that, but... They still hear his voice. That sort of thing is a way of lingering. Dude, I'm not Sutherland. You can't argue with a ghost. I'm not Commander Sutherland. I'm not saying we won't have our disagreements. In fact, I'm sure we will. But I'm also sure they will be different disagreements than you had in the past. Perhaps that change will be enough. Now, this won't be easy. But I'm glad to have you here with me. Glad to be here, Captain. And despite it all, we've got our final Starfleet clearance to depart. So if you'll fetch Mr. Ermot, We'll knock out the final details of any outstanding repairs, and then we'll set out for Hotari. Yes, sir. Yeah, dude. Ready or not? Here we go. Yeah. I'm not so sure about this guy. I understand why Commander Sutherland didn't like him. God, it's such a cool ship. Sorry to sail her by. I love it. Don't stink eye me. All departments reporting full mission Lower readiness. decks. We've got our full complement on board. This is my favorite moment right now. The start of a new mission is always full of possibility. The Orion Syndicate is selling us a drug. <laughs> Don't let the Admiralty hear you say that. Hmm. Captain on the bridge. Sit. Sit, everyone. You all know, I'm not big on speeches. We're embarking on the first mission since our refit. Let's make it a good one. Disengage docking clamps. Yeah, the proper way this time. Docking clamps released. Rusters ahead, Mr. Handar. Oh, what a cool ship. Yeah, that's a lot of impulse engine. She's quick. Mm. Super cool.
So cool, all the shuttle bays in the front. Set a course for the Hotari system. Prepare to go to war bait. Hi, Captain. You know what? You take this one. I know. Me? You're gonna make me choose a phrase? Do it. Do it! Tell me. Do it. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Do it. Nicely done. I just said two words. Sit my ass in my chair. That was way too hard. <laughs> Whoa. Careful. Thank you. I'm fine. Really. I uh You don't look fine. Mm. What's going on? Now I need to go get some duridium. I have to get to sick bay. Go. What the hell? Man. Help me get her inside. Oof. Well. Well, that was quite a scare. A few minutes more and it would have been one of the shortest tenues on record for a oh first officer. Oh my office. god. Is that the engineer that was out on the hull? That storm did a real number on him. It's a voice actress who voiced Seer in Jedi rest. Survivor. Awesome. Don't worry about yourself. Your iridium levels got dangerously low and destabilized your cell structure. This is definitely one of the more memorable first days I can think of. <laughs> My name is Dr. Aram Duval, Chief Medical Officer. To be honest, I've never met a Kogliad before. You're rare, I know. Hmm. I was going to say special. Your people's numbers have dwindled. Despite the Federation's efforts to find a more readily available alternative to the Duridium you need to survive. Yet you joined Starfleet and managed to thrive. I imagine the responsibility must be overwhelming. Maybe even a burden at times. Nah, it's an honor. It does make me unique, but it's not a burden at all. I'm honored to be Kobliad, to represent my people. As you should be. And don't worry, I won't treat you like a science experiment. I just do the science and leave the experiments to Solano. <laughs> you don't agree with his methods? I don't agree with his definition of acceptable risks. Yeah, I see. The lives of your crew are at stake. My professional opinion is that the accident took a toll. More than he's willing to admit. Yeah, it did. He's overstressed, operating in the pressure cooker of his own mind. Which is never a good headspace when the lives of your crew are at stake. Correct. What concerns me is that now he's even further away from the thing he's been chasing his entire career. Breakthrough discovery. The major innovation. It's something he can put his name on. Yeah. The more the time passes and the further out of reach it gets, the more risk he'll be willing I'm to I'm not going to let that happen. I hear you. But that's my job, isn't it? To make sure that doesn't happen. And we don't lose sight of the bigger picture. Which is exactly why I'm so glad you're here. We need you now more than ever. I have to admit, I was concerned when I heard what happened on the bridge. Mm. You just followed Solano's orders despite having better options in front of you. Huh. I guess word travels fast around here. It's a small ship. Yeah, it is. And everyone's curious about the new XO. Fortunately, your cell structure is almost completely stabilized. And I'll spare us both the lecture, but I do feel it's my responsibility to remind you that without regular infusions of duridium, you will not live. It's as simple as that. <laughs> Understood. Then, my work here is done. <laughs> hmm. Sorry, I didn't mean to be lurking outside of sickbay. 
I didn't want to intrude, so it felt more appropriate to wait out here. We were all worried about you. Or I should say I was. Dude. I wasn't sure what was happening at first. But then I realized it was your condition. You didn't come to gloat? You sure you didn't come here to gloat? Remind me that you saw this coming the moment I stepped on board. Make no mistake, I like being right. And I won't be quiet about it when I am. But it didn't happen at the worst time. You made it through that. So I guess I was wrong. And a bit of a jerk. Yeah. You trusted my intuition earlier with the deflector pulse. I felt I should thank you for that. Well, thank you for coming. Even though you didn't have to. Hmm. I wanted to. Interesting. Now, Carter, the emissions that gave you that burn are quite unusual, like everything else that goes with this storm. That's a combination of hyronolin and lectrazine to counter the radiation effects. That should help speed your healing. <laughs> She's come by a couple of times to see you already. Nice. Cute. Be brief. It's good to see you awake again. I was starting to get worried. Not that you aren't in good hands with Dr. Duvall. Hmm. You did take one hell of a shot, though. Thanks for checking on me. I hear you've been checking in on me. Thanks for that. One of the benefits of working a security rotation. Lots of opportunities to walk by sick bay and stop in. <laughs> Millie was looking in on you too, by the way. But since it's just us right now, I... I had a chance to think about this while I was away. And I thought it was important that I just come out and tell you. Instead of tiptoeing around it. Or worse. You can tell me anything. Said, it's okay, Miranda. You can tell me anything. I know that. Well, then come on. Whoa. Just spit it out. <laughs> I'm trying. Let me talk. What I'm trying to say is, we've been really good friends for a long time. But I got back here and I couldn't ignore it anymore. I want to see if there's more between us than just being friends. Yeah, I've got some feelings for you too. You don't have to explain it. I feel the same way. There is something between us. So, do you want to find out what that something is? If it's there for you, and it's there for me, why not give it a try? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I just said yes. <laughs> I wanted to be sure I heard that right. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, but uh, the patient needs to rest. <laughs> if he wants to get back to his old self. Of course. See you again soon. Kiss her. Kiss her. Damn it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. No. Hmm. Oh, Diaz. Approaching the rendezvous point outside Atari space. Helm, bring us out of warp. Dropping to impulse. Whoa, cool. Ionic interference surging, Captain. Probably a bad place to drop out of warp, though, if I'm being real. Shield integrity holding. We can take it. We are at the correct coordinates to meet the shuttle. Commander Rydeck, find us our diplomat, if you will. <laughs> Aye, Captain. Let's reduce the noise. Filter out environmental signals. I can manually tune what's left for Federation signal types. Cool. Awesome. I've located the shuttle. Opening comms. On screen. Oh no. Shuttle to Resolute. Shuttle to Resolute. Debris field. Lost maneuvering. Excelsior? I can't get it any clearer. USS Excelsior? It's just Holy not crap. happening. Power up the tractor beam. We'll pull them directly into the docking bay. At this point, the NX, the Excelsior still exists. Diaz, you good to run the tractor emitter? You know it. Yes, sir. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> cool. 
Come on, Diaz. At this point, it's a like a diplomatic ship First and a thing, training vessel. Lock onto the shuttle and stabilize the rotation. All right. So what are we doing? Okay. Okay. The Grayson. Amanda Grayson. Is it Spock? Pulling in debris. I'm on it. Is it frickin' Spock? Uh, oh, come on. Come on. What are we doing? Get that one. What are we doing? No! No! Wrong one to deflect. No! Oh no! I had to like figure out how that one worked. Come on. That's gonna take out the shuttle. Via the bridge. There's a large piece of debris headed for the shuttle. I think that was supposed to happen though. Can our shields take it? I believe so. Vermont, you better be right. Plot an intercept course. On it. Alright. Dope. Cool. Here we go. Maneuvering thrusters bearing 53 Mark 17, 200 meters on an intercept course. Maneuvering. Oof. Point. Cut it right in half. Nice. Whoa. Someone's working hard on the bridge. Awesome. Nice, bring her in. NCC 2000, that is so cool. Uh, she's almost 100 years old at this point. <sighs> nice job, Diaz, and me. We got the shuttlecraft on board. Good job. We're on our way down to meet them. Who is it? Who is it? Holy shit. Terra firma, so to speak. Spock. Ambassador Spock. Oh my god. Holy crap. The captain will be right down to meet you, sir. In that case, I will wait for him here. Wow. The voice. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Sorry for the rough landing. There you go. Apologies for the landing, Ambassador. I was operating the tractor beam, sir. I take responsibility. The craft suffered a few collisions, but I believe the saying is it will buff out. <laughs> We thought we were prepared for our arrival in Hotari space, but it is evident my craft was not sufficiently robust for such intense ionic activity. The storm has been pretty intense. There was an element that was most unusual. Before you came to our aid, our maneuvering thrusters and impulse engines were rendered inoperable. Hmm. So we attempted a short traversal at warp speed, only to find that we could not achieve warp at all. Even though our diagnostics computer showed no faults or anomalies. Interesting. What do you make of that? When all indications say that warp speed is possible, but in practice, we find it is not. Probably the storm. Well, this storm is one of the strangest phenomena we've ever encountered. It's disrupted other systems. Who knows what it might do to a warp drive? Yes, it 
would seem further investigation is called for. Wow. Take readings. That voice some additional diagnostic it has checks. to be done with AI. That is we'll super good. This. <laughs> Quite logical. Petty officer uh, Diaz. Carter Diaz. Sir. Thank you. I love it. This is so cool. Spock. Excuse me. I'm honored to have you aboard. I'd like to get right to it. Wow. Diaz, you're a stud. And on that note, my friends, oh, this is such a joy to play this game. I am so excited. Oh, Spock, the voice. I, I, my mind is blown. My mind is blown. Um, the voice is so good and it was the perfect introduction and it was that little telegraph that if you didn't know who Amanda Grayson was, you should, um, Man, that was like a nice little telegraph of them just saying, hey, Spock's in here, but we're not going to say Spock's in here. So, oh, my friends, that was a lot of fun today. Uh, and I just want to say thank you. I know there's a million things you could have done today, and you spent some time watching me play a video game, which to me is pretty damn cool. If you guys have any questions, comments, tips, tricks, please leave them down below. If you'd like to support the channel, please like and subscribe. And my friends, until we see each other again, I hope you all have a wonderful day in this beautiful world, wherever you happen to be. And just remember to always live long and prosper.